Good morning, guys. I was asked about a couple of my mods for Minecraft, so I'm going to make you guys a quick video just to go through some of this stuff. Um, I wish it was as simple as go to website, download file, and it works. Uh, it's not particularly too much more difficult, but it is still a little bit... Well, it needs a little bit of an explanation, so we'll get into it. All right. Um, I'm first off going to switch to my desktop so you guys can see. Um, inside your username, app data, roaming, Minecraft folder, you've got a bunch of mods. This is usually where you'll find your screenshots, for example. Um, in here is also a mods folder. Moving the downloaded files that you get into this folder is how you activate the mods. That sounds pretty easy, but default Minecraft is not equipped to run mods. So we have to run Minecraft in a modified form in order to allow mods to work. Basically, we have to give it a mod UI. Many games out there, like World of Warcraft, already come with this pre-installed, so you can simply put mods in a folder and the game will run them. Minecraft doesn't know what to do with these mods. It doesn't have that code. So we need to give it that code. Now, there's various different versions of this. I use something called Fabric. There is Forge and other ones out there. So whilst this is code that allows you to uh, load in mods, it also optimizes the way Minecraft plays. I've had FPS increases of 200, 250 in some certain areas. I will provide the mods that we're going to be using today for this tutorial in a link so you guys can download them and just dump them in here and I'm going to now show you how they work. So to go through them quickly, there's a lot of mods here that I've got. You won't need all of these. I'm not going to give you all of these. If you want to go and find mods after this, you'll have the setup to do so. Fabric is the main one. This is the loader. This is what we will run Minecraft through. On your Minecraft launcher, you will have a drop-down box here. This drop-down box will contain the release, which is what you'll normally play with, along with the snapshot version, which is kind of like a beta for what's coming next. And it will come with the fabric loader. So it's basically loading the same thing, but with extra code to allow you to boot mods into the game as well. So that's what the fabric one does. Now, there are many others in here, but there's a couple of other ones we're going to need. First off is the fabric API. Minecraft still doesn't know what mods are. So we have to give it an API, which is the second one I've highlighted up here. But you'll need both of these. And I can show you right now, if I boot Minecraft, exactly what this is going to look like and what it's going to do for you guys. If I go into the escape section and I go to options, here is what Fabric does. If I go to video settings, you'll notice this is now very different and tells you what everything is. So if you're standing there thinking, what is render distance? it will tell you, and it tells you what the performance impact of each piece will be. But what are the actual performance benefits? If I go into my F3 menu, on the second line down, you will see three, it's about 400 FPS. I am right in the middle of the server. Fabric creates this level of performance that I didn't have in Minecraft before. So I, even if you're not gonna do mods, I fully recommend having Fabric. So now that we've got Fabric and the Fabric API, we've got a much better running Minecraft, and all we had to do was put the file in here and then boot Minecraft. And we've got the capability to run mods. The first one we want to get hold of is something called Mod Menu. A lot of mods out there don't have easy settings options. Mod Menu solves most of that. It's actually into the section here. So Mod Menu is this, and basically what it does is it puts all of your mods on the side. I can then click a mod and it will give me all the details. And over here, there's a little configure thing. You will want mod menu so that you've got access to these settings. So the mod I've been asked about is actually this. This displays light levels on the floor. Now in Minecraft, light levels go from one to, I think it's 13, 14, I think it's 14. If the darkness of night in a cave, rain, thunderstorms is, is there, mobs will spawn on anything below one. So what this mod does is it puts an overlay on every single block that's spawnable and allows you to see which ones can spawn. Again, these are two I will give you along with this video, but both of these are going to put this functionality into the game. Now the Mali Lib or library is going to allow all of Mali's mods to work. And then we'll also get his HUD in, the mini HUD. So now that we've got the mini HUD into the mods folder, we can go to this and we can find the mod, we were mini HUD. We can go up here to the configure option, top right once again, and click and it will give us all of the options. It does contain all the wonderful things like the light levels. Immediately, you're gonna have the generic options open. You've got colors, info lines, structures, a lot of, lot of confusing mess, right? There's a lot of, oh God, what does all of this do? I'm not gonna go through all of these. You can take a look through and see what you like. When it comes to debugging render paths and stuff like this, I would be very careful not to change any of this. 
just leave it alone if you don't know what it does or if you're at all unsure. Now when you start, your main rendering toggle will say true and then it will probably say H. And this will be in most of the structures. It'll be at the top for info lines, structures, renderers. It'll say H. What you want to do is click it so that you get the little arrows and then press escape. And that will change it to none. You want to go down to overlay light level. You want to click it and you want to press H. H is a key on your keyboard that's not really used for anything else in Minecraft, so it's a great way of doing this. Now on the main rendering toggle, you need to set this as true, and you need to go over here and click on the button, which will bring up this, right? What you need to do is scroll down to allow empty keybind and set that as true. So make sure you've got overlay light level set to H and false, and make sure you've got main rendering toggle set to true and none, and the little clickable button has allow empty keybind set to true. We're going to ignore shapes. We're going to ignore structures. We're going to ignore info lines. That then will allow you, if you go onto here, to press H and have all of this up. There is one last thing that I can show you. If I lean to the, this section, I might go off the camera here. You'll notice that beneath me here, I have coordinates and which direction I'm facing. So if you want to get this, this is also part of the mod. So if you don't, you're done, you can turn off the video. If you do want to show your coordinates without having to press F3 and get all of this permanently sat nicely in the corner, I can show you how to do that. So again, we're gonna go into the mod menu, press escape, click mods, mini HUD, and into the config button in the top right. First off, we're gonna to go to info lines. We can now go down to info coordinates. Now by default, this mod will show you coordinates, it will show you direction, and it will show you time and date. I can even add one that shows you how high the horse will jump that you're riding. There's a lot of information in the F3 menu that frankly, I would rather get rid of. For me, I've got coordinates, which is info coordinates. And scrolling down a bit further, I've got info facing, which shows the player's current facing direction. Again, just set them to true. That's all you need to do. There's one for time IRL, which I believe is on at default, which will tell you the time and date of the real world. I don't want to see that while I'm playing Minecraft, but if you do, that's up to you. You can keep that on. If we go into generic across the top, we're going to scroll down. We're going to find a bunch of blank text boxes that we can type in. The first one I'm going to direct you to is coordinate format. So what you want to do is change it here so it's much more easily readable to you guys. So for coordinates, when we display on screen, we want to show X equals, there will be a space for you. I simply clicked and I deleted the space. Over here, it will say 0.1. I deleted the one and I put in a zero. If you're confused at all, you can literally copy this. Font scaling starts on 0.5, it's very small. You will want to change this to one. The last piece of today is HUD alignment. I'm not actually sure why anybody would have it in the center, but you can if you like. I'm gonna set mine back to the bottom left. So once again, just for a quick review of the whole thing. So if I go into C, users, select my name, uh, find the app data, roaming, Minecraft mods, and this is where we drop them. I will provide the files for you. Fabric has a massive amount of modification libraries for you to play with. That's up to you if you want to find and install any more mods going forward, but otherwise, enjoy the light levels, guys. Phase out.